Uh, hi, everybody. Um, thank you for coming out to talk today. Um, so what we're here to talk about is uh, Library Lounge. So it's me, Clayton Coleman, Angelina, um, and Sam Kirk, and we're from the University of Pennsylvania in various capacities. Um, so what we're hoping to do is to kind of give you an idea and an overview of what Library Lounge is, how we've implemented it, um, and give you some specifics on what it looks like, um, both in terms of classroom environments and outside of the classroom with uh, faculty members, students, and librarians. Um, but before we do that, I think it's important to talk about a little bit what Library Lounge is more specifically. Um, so basically, it offers a customizable library instructional service for students. Um, and this exists in the Canvas course site. So we place them, <coughs> Canvas is the LMS that we use um, for online courses and face-to-face uh, -face courses as well. And we place this information, these instructional materials, in the Canvas course sites, usually within modules in Canvas. Um, it includes video tutorials, as well as exchanges with librarians. Usually that off comes in the forms of LibGuys, which we'll talk about in a second, um, as well as discussion forum posts, and uh, self-assessment tool, which we'll talk about as well. Uh, but ultimately, what it does is it helps students who may not necessarily realize the benefit of librarian expertise get that expertise. So I think Ben talked about um, students not necessarily understanding that stuff that exists outside of the online space actually exists. Um, sometimes it's difficult to get students to understand what exists actually in that online space, right? Um, and so trying to figure out how it is the best to communicate that to them through librarian expertise as part of the Library Lounge project. So this is an example, as I mentioned before, of a LibGuide. What you'll see here are a host of different Library Lounge um, videos that accord with uh, specific databases and resources that are usually uh, tailored towards particular courses. So you see here, of course, there's the Bibliotech JSTOR, but there's also Google Scholar and a couple other things. But what you'll also notice here is that it also has accompanying materials that exist um, for these courses. So you'll see worksheets um, that may be uh, connected to that research process. You'll also see a research guide which provides some resources for students and a way to connect specifically to a librarian who will help them walk them through the process, answer questions um, that uh, they have in conversation with uh, faculty. Uh, and as you'll notice here as well, there's some social media presence and an overarching link to Penn Libraries in general. So if they have to find those online materials, they can do that from here as well. So. The next question is, we have an idea of what Library Lounge is, what it looks like, a little bit on co in courses uh, through the LibGuides. Um, who is involved in this, right? Who are the partners? Um, and as you can kind of see, there are three of us in here, but there's a whole host of individuals who go into making this project possible. Um, of course, the Penn Libraries, Teaching, Research, and Learning Services, um, Arts and Sciences, Online Learning, and Online Learning Studio, as well as uh, the Vitaly Digital Media Lab and Hefton Studio. And all of this goes into kind of creating these video content. Um, also, figuring out how it is that you get um, people together in the same room, going through the instructional design process, a whole bunch of different types of things that go into building um, these library allows materials. So, speaking of building the materials and who uses it and who's involved, um, this is a chart that kind of shows the growth, steady, I would argue, exponential growth that's happened since the inception of Library Lounge. So now it's served hundreds of students. Um, it's been implemented in a variety of different courses. And as you can kind of see here, um, they're not necessarily just arts and science sort of courses. There's nursing that's uh, represented here as well. There's education courses that are represented here as well. They're not just undergraduate courses. They're graduate courses um, in which librarians, faculty, and student kind of interface to find uh, important resources for them for research. Uh, but basically what it does is it fosters relationships in a lot of ways between faculty, librarians, and students. So I'm going to take over at this point. Mm -hmm. um, so you now know a little bit more about Library Lounge, and you might be wondering, um, why have we chosen to create this virtual space, this virtual hub within the course site for, for students? Um, a couple different reasons. First, it's kind of a one-stop destination. It's a place that students can go and return to again and again throughout their semester, versus Many librarians, at least, and perhaps some instructors are used to this one-shot model where you get one time with a class in person. Um, this is a way that the librarians can interact with students throughout the entire semester, synchronously or asynchronously. It's repurposable as well, which means that a librarian can reuse this content again and again um, over different semesters without having to change a whole lot. It allows us to connect with students in many different ways. 
so they can connect through discussion boards, they can connect through the videos themselves that we create, um, and those connection points can be strategically placed throughout the semester for a given course. Um, facilitates complexity. We're not aiming to replace the in-person experience when a librarian visits a course. It just frees up the time for librarians, and I, I'm the librarian here in the group, um, to do more complex problem solving in the class, in the flipped model, uh, versus having to do kind of how to find articles, how to find books, the basics, that can be covered asynchronously through Library Lounge. I mean, finally, it lets us to think about scalability a little bit more. We're starting to approach the MOOC space, massive online open courses, and other online programs here at Penn, and this is a way that we can do this with few library resources. Great. Um, so I want to talk um, a little bit about kind of how we're working with faculty and what our model is, um, and we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more about students too when we talk about data and continuous improvement. Um, so our relationships with faculty are really modeled on how our libra librarians have been working with faculty and also how our online team has been working with faculty, which is that they're one-on-one, -on -one, consultative, and ongoing. So um, we work with them before a course starts, throughout the course, and then usually there's a debrief um, and kind of a goal setting for the next time. So they're ongoing, they're very personal. Um, we often will start with initial meetings um, where we um, kind of set goals and um, try to, to get an understanding of how we're situating research methodologies within the particular course or within the particular academic discipline. And then, like I said, we'll conclude with a debrief. Um, but we're also talking to them kind of throughout the implementation of Library Lounge. Um, so these are just some of our key questions. These are questions I think we would recommend you ask if you're trying to do something similar. You know, what are the learning objectives of your course and how do research methodologies fit in? Sounds basic, but uh, depending upon the course, you could get a variety of answers. Um, what do you perceive your students' needs to be, uh, to be about research and library skills? Um, talking about research methodologies or um, library or digital resources that are unique to a domain. If you are searching for educational research, you're going to do a different thing than if you were a nursing student. You're going to use different databases, you're going to look for different key terms. So we want to get a sense from that instructor, you know, what is, what is your understanding of the lay of the land? And we also have expertise from our librarians as well. Um, and then uh, Clay and I are both from the online team, and um, we're always interested in, in talking with instructors about um, how we can maximize asynchronous interaction. So that's interaction that happens on the student's own time, um, not in a physical classroom or not in a video conferencing session, um, as well as synchronous time, which is in a classroom or um, a video conferencing session, and Zoom is our current favorite video conferencing session. Um, so this idea of asynchronous time is a little bit more nuanced than homework, right? Um, and so talking with them about how, how can this asynchronous interaction strengthen students' engagement with these, engagement within use of these methodologies, and how can it feed the time that you have them face-to-face -face and the librarian has them face-to-face. Um, we've talked a lot in generalities, but I wanted to talk a little specifically, uh, more specifically about what the content is, at least in terms of the video production that we do. Um, so Library Lounge predates this framework, uh, but we tie our new content to the ACRL framework for information literacy for higher education, which is a series of frames and standards, knowledge practices, and knowledge dispositions that we anticipate higher education that students will develop over the course of their career. So. Um, we, uh, we have taken all of our content and aligned it to that framework, which was very useful uh, because it allowed us to identify um, where we're very strong. The frame of searching and strategic exploration is perhaps not so surprisingly an area where we have a lot of strength. Um, the frame of scholarship as conversation, which is more close to intellectual property, copyright, um, that discussion we haven't entered as much in our content, so it's where we want to go moving forward. Great. Um, so I'll talk really briefly about how we're uh, making this video portfolio that we have, and we'll, we'll make sure to give you a link to it later. Um, so our online learning team includes um, a studio and a multimedia staff people, and there's also kind of a comparable studio and multimedia staff people who are in the library, and we've developed videos in both of those spaces. Um, so we follow a production approach, but we also have a lot of pieces working in the background. Um, some of our work is studio-based. We have a green screen. You know, we can put a person in front of all kinds of things uh, with the green screen. We have also used screencasting in software like ScreenFlow and Camtasia. If the person, the face, is not super important, and what's important is what needs to be shown occasionally if it's a really complicated database or like 
something you know much more driven by a user interface, we might do a screen casting approach. Um, and uh, we've done a few where librarians really kind of we've supported librarians in doing their own video, but most of the video, um, one of the two multimedia teams has kind of put the final gloss on it. Um, when something is produced, um, we are managing our multimedia and a multimedia server called Panopto. There are other servers, Kaltura is one, there are many. Um, we're also managing permission management in Panopto, which is tricky if you want people from across the university to be able to pull on your content and get it easily into their course sites, but you'd rather they have a conversation with you first before you do that. So that can get a little bit tricky, but I think we found that Panopto um, does what we need it to do. We also have almost our entire portfolio available on YouTube kind of for a public audience. So we're tracking um, student usage in Panopto and um, put, we're tracking public usage in YouTube, kind of non-pen based usage. Um, we're obviously keenly aware of um, requirements around accessibility, so we are captioning everything. Um, and we're using an integration with Replay and Panopto. Um, and then we're integrating into the course, we're integrating um, either the video directly via Panopto and Canvas working together or via the LibGuide working with Canvas. So it's a lot of uh, different tools, but kind of to give you a sense of that we do have at least a half a dozen different tools that we're using um, to deploy a single library lounging instance. It's important to us when we have all of these different implementations running at once to find out what's successful and what's not as successful. And we have a lot of different data points for this, both quantitative and qualitative. So on the quantitative side, Panopto is fantastic because it allows us to see video views as well as the duration. So if a student is only watching 15 seconds of a three minute and 30 second video, we are aware of that. Um, and we know that our videos have to be shorter in such cases or more interesting. Uh, <laughs> We have an adaptive <coughs> trainer. Um, so an adaptive trainer is a diagnostic tool, which means students can take a quiz, and that quiz will recommend, based on their strengths and weaknesses, or specifically based on their weaknesses, what videos we recommend they watch. That happens dynamically. Um, it happened in Qualtrics previously. Uh, we are now using uh, Articulate, Articulate Storyline, right? Mm -hmm. Articulate Storyline, which is in beta. Um, but it's very interesting. We also have Canvas quizzes, of course, so we're able to assess whether or not a student actually watched the video and then retain information from it. On the qualitative side, we have discussion boards, so some librarians make use of discussion boards throughout the semester, and looking at that content throughout can really tell us what are some failure points for students or confusion points. Um, SurveyMonkey, we ask students at the end of each semester, each implementation, a, a variety of questions, including the one up here, um, to what degree did you feel less stressed because you used Library Lounge, because our tagline is better research, less stress. Um, and many, many of the students somewhat agree with this, so that's good. <laughs> um, and then finally, we mentioned the faculty, um, the faculty debrief process after each video that also helps us to identify improvement points. Um, so, of course, we've done a lot of implementation, we've done a lot of work. Uh, the next question would be, what's next? Like, how can we make things better? How can we kind of improve on the things that we've done? So, the first thing, of course, out of many would be to determine how it is that we can reach more students, right? How we can put this information in the critical path of students that isn't necessarily just in the course sites, um, but places they might have points of contact. Um, also, how is it that we can further develop the materials that we have for online uh, learning environments, mm -hmm. online only learning environments? And that's mm -hmm. a, a growth area for us as a university, and I think it's happening across the board amongst many universities. Um, also, how might we introduce offerings earlier in the course development process for faculty. Um, and we mentioned too that uh, course development process including structural design and other pieces and components that go into kind of developing the materials that we have. Uh, making sure that uh, faculty are aware ahead of time that these materials are available and kind of put that into the development process for them. And last, um, but not least, increasing the use of adaptive assessment. And Sam mentioned that with the personal trainer to determine individual <coughs> research training needs. Mm -hmm. um, so how it is that we can kind of figure out what student need, what students need, and then develop that material surrounding that, um, similar to faculty. Um, so just in closing, um, we're great. Uh, <laughs> we, um, our slides are already in the repository. Um, this is our library lounge website that is basically everything we just told you. Um, and um, also a link to the public portfolio of videos on YouTube. Please use them as much as you like. That's why they're there. Um, we want to share them with other institutions. Um, so please, please do use them. 